This is where the United States Air Force kept their cruise missiles, each armed with a nuclear warhead powerful enough to kill millions of people and plunge us into World War III, the apocalypse. A generation of women fought the authorities for two decades to stop the American nuclear presence in Britain. But while battle raged at the fences, one creature was staking its claim to the land within. The Adder. Surviving in the protected confines of Greenham Common, Britain's most venomous creature is disappearing from the rest of the country. Adders only breed every two or three years. And, unlike most reptiles, they give birth to live young, which go straight into hibernation and don't feed until they are over a year old. Like all boys, I was obsessed with snakes. There's something mechanical about them. Every scale fits together so beautifully. So one day the inevitable happens. I had to touch one and I got bitten. Now here's the thing, adder bites aren't as dangerous as they're cracked up to be. In fact, although their venom can be powerful enough to kill a human, you're more likely to die from a lightning strike or a stray golf ball. Sure, it hurt a lot. I was a bit worried at the time, but the point is, I'm still here to tell the tale. After the Americans left Greenham Common, it became a nature reserve, which was good news for the resident adders. This mixture of ancient woodland, woodland edge and heathland is perfect for adders and the population here is estimated to be in the hundreds. With adders declining in the rest of the country, the Green and Common Trust is working to keep their population here healthy. Faye Wilman is as obsessed by snakes as I am. She has 30 of them at home. She's devoted her time to help at Greenham Common, building up the first genetic database of adders across Britain. What does this genetic information really tell us about the adder? How st structured their populations are and in what way. Um, we can infer measurements about inbreeding and outbreeding. We should get an idea of how isolated or not they might be, make more educated decisions about how we manage them. We've got one here. How do you get that genetic information for each snake? So we're going to take a cloacal swab. Right, so we're going to try and get his head in there. Look at that, look yeah, at that, an lovely. obliging male. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to grab that swab. Okay, that's that. Tap the tube. The adder has one multi-purpose opening for all of its bodily functions, from which DNA can be extracted quickly and painlessly. And that is it. So he's yeah. done his bit for adder kind, and yeah. we'll just go back go exactly back where you got him from. In there, and then we'll pop him back exactly where we found him. It's great to see healthy adders on Greenham Common, but that alone can't save them. Because the rest of the UK's colonies are becoming more and more fragmented, genetic diversity will drop, and inbreeding could eventually wipe them out. Their populations are becoming increasingly separated, isolated from one another and divided up by our roads and building projects. And if you do get a brave individual that wants to make a break for it, the chances are it ends up as roadkill. Nigel Hand is a conservationist turned adder detective. He's on a mission to find out how adders move across the Morven Hills using the latest radio tracking technology. Adders are declining throughout their range yeah. in big trouble. Is the same the case here? Oh yes, it's definitely so. Um, over the years we've seen a decline in numbers. Even on a site like this that looks really rather splendid for adders. Well, just walking across here, Nick, you've got this wide open path. That's, a, that's an obstacle for them. Right. And if you go into the wider countryside, they've got um, fragmented fields, you know, sort of arable fields and, and very grey, short grassland, which they can't cross. In the past there would have been what we call satellite populations, meta-populations, so they were linked to the healthier genes of those animals, but now they're all concentrated in one area, and if something catastrophic happens there, they're all lost, you know. Yeah. The air temperature might have come directly... Nigel's from. taken me to one of his adder hotspots, so that we can catch one and tag it with a transmitter. Right at the back, you No, no. It's very calm the way you introduce that yep. to conversation. Oh, there, there, look, 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 look. Come out. 
This is what I love about adders is if you want an animal that is so matched to its environment, you don't get much better. It looks like the bracken. Any bit of this bracken kind of mirrors the patterns or the adder mirrors the patterns of, these, the, of its environment. And this nice crisp bed of bracken is warming up, it's picking up those tiny little bits of heat from the sun and this is what the adder is making the most of. If you find an adder, don't pick it up, leave that to the experts. Look at that, now you're looking at the face of the adder. It's the only one of our snakes that has that cat-like eye. As very few people get close enough to see these particular details. And his permanent frown, which is created by a ridge of scales over the eye, this is the animal we are all so fearful of. And all he wants to do is get away from me. I know. Now, we can't tag this male because it will soon be shedding its skin as it's just come out of hibernation. But a few metres away, we're lucky enough to find a female we can tag. Oh, that's 49 at least. That's a, that's a good-sized breeding animal, isn't it? This doesn't do the snake any harm. So while I carefully hold it, Nigel can attach a transmitter. So, what is this tag going to be doing? It's going to be giving a signal, Nick, uh, on a regular basis. We'll be up here every two, two days or so, and just tracking the movements and GPS monitoring where the snake's positions are at every time we're we, we finding the snake. We just see that tiny little window into their world, and it gives us insight. I think that's what's really important. Insight in how this animal lives, how it moves about, and that is the whole point, because without that information, you can't even begin to understand it and look after it. There she goes, one live lovely, ready to divulge her secrets to the scientific community. If you are lucky enough to come across an adder, report it to your local wildlife trust and ask if you can get involved as a volunteer. Now hopefully by now you're beginning to, I guess, understand why I get so excited by adders. It's that same feeling I've got ever since I first saw one as a small boy. I guess what's really sad for me, what's really poignant about this animal is that we are in real risk of losing them. Day by day they get rarer and rarer and uh, it's thanks to the dedication of some pretty committed individuals that this beautiful creature has any hope in our future at all.